we were going to sing as well. So we had a surprise. Lovely, yeah, that was a beautiful <laughs> surprise. It's funny, but when you both sing, you truly sing in love Aww. with each other, and it just shows so much. The way he kind of gives you that little look, and you're flirting. <laughs> you're still flirting with him. How long have you two been together? Three, Three years. years. Three years, no wonder they're still flirting. It's their new year words. Are you words yet? <laughs> no. But the reason, obviously, the reason they sung that song is because this is, uh, we're at the Pepper Mill in Las Vegas, and this is the booth where Elvis Presley spent most of his time when he was actually in the Pepper Mill. So this was very appropriate to sort of uh, bring it back because this is a man that none of us can forget. I mean, he's always there. I mean, after all these years, and, and he's always going to be there. And, what do you think made him that sort of, you know, that, that kind of icon? I mean, he just took over the whole music world. He was he was such a down to earth soul. He he was he was such a good man. He came. He grew up poor. Yes. And he then did. he gave it away. Once he had it, he gave it away. Yeah. You know, that's that's and, a great quality. And that is a great quality because apparently, and I'm, this is her say, but apparently he gave an awful lot of money to a lot of different charities and different people but never said a word and he didn't want anything said about this he wanted to kept very very quiet he was a very um very quiet man but we also had a lot of problems with his hands and a lot of things that kind of um that we never knew about and i'm not going to talk about them because it's not you know not my place to do so because we just want to see this man as who he is and how he sort of how he performed and everything let's get down to you two now when did you two start you know in this business, you started obviously before you met each other. Oh yeah, because you've been in that business longer than three years. Believe me. Go ahead. Well, she. Uh, I started in 1976. I was 19. Okay. You, you do the math. Yes. Do and the math out there. <laughs> I started in 82. They're not old. Old-ish. <laughs> I started in 82 when I was 15. You're 15. Yeah. <laughs> well, I started broadcasting when I was one. <laughs> so commit the math there. <laughs> I've only been doing this <laughs> No, I'm 39 and holding and I'm staying there. Like <laughs> Believe me, everybody knows that. <laughs> so you started, both started very, very young. Mm -hmm. And what made you go into the business? Family or was it just something that you enjoyed? I had an uncle that was a, a drummer. He was in music, so that got me, got me wanting to be in the music. And you, you, did you practice? I had, what, were you a natural or what was it? Uh, well, my dad bought me a guitar down in uh, Tijuana when I was a kid. And, Tijuana? And, and I love the old music, 50s and 60s music, and, and it, you, three chords, and, and you know a million songs, so I thought that's what that's I want to do. That's what you want to do, and, and you've been quite successful, and you, what made you go into it? I was surrounded by musicians when I was little. They're yeah. all folk musicians, it was the 70s, you know. They all sang in church, and, and so I had my first guitar when I was five, and I took lessons. And, why do so many people, I've noticed, that come to, come to, to actually start um, in, in a church? A lot of them have that sort of, I don't know if it's because they can practice there or they, can, they realize they have a voice there. Yes. Whitney Houston? Mm -hmm. Even people that can't sing sound great in a church. Well, well, churches true. have the best acoustics. <laughs> they do. They make everybody <laughs> sound well, well, great. Well, wait a second. They make everybody sound good and feel good and are good. <laughs> I go. think that, that's go. the kind of the message there. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. that's why they all succeed there. But I notice a lot of them do that. They, they, they seem to come from there into a choir or singing as a solo or whatever it is and then come out into the into the world of Vegas. Have you both always been in Vegas? No. You both came from California. California. What part? I was born in England, went to school in Torrance. Oh, I know England well. Yeah. Very well, yes. And Laker I, fan, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not a Laker fan, but I used to have a I used to have a TV show called Voices of Tomorrow, which I used to give the younger generation a voice in society, and I had a TV show for, uh, for 16 years. So I had children all over. I knew every single school in Los Angeles, but I always went to the poor areas because I wanted to give those children a chance. And I wanted to let them know that you didn't have to have anything particular to be something or be somebody. And I think you, you two will probably know that. You don't have to be anybody. You don't have to have money. You don't, it doesn't matter True. the color of the skin. It doesn't matter the religion. You know, it doesn't matter as a child. You can, you, you've got that same opportunity, and I wanted to give them that opportunity. You also had a Carson connection too, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah. And, and Kansas City? Well, Kansas City, Kansas City had no hotel. I've been doing research on you. <laughs> oh, you yes. Stalking is more like it. But. Stalking me. <laughs> I did. My husband and I actually had a hotel in Kansas City. Is that right? Yes, we did. It was a, actually it was an old um, old Hilton hotel. And it overlooked the um, overlooked the airport, the old airport in Kansas City. But back to you. So, so where do you play now? Where you? What are you doing now? Both of you. You've got, you're a very good team together. So, 
Well, we play all over. Um, we play every Tuesday and Wednesday at the Gold Strike Casino in Gene, Nevada. And for everything else, you can just go to our website, which is stephanrock.com, and go to the schedule. And there's a calendar. There's a calendar and uh, maps and everything. So you can always find out where we're going to be. We play anywhere from three to six times a week. So y'all kept, actually, y'all kept pretty busy. We stay pretty busy. Yeah, you're kept from the, which is unusual because I've been only been in Vegas for years and I've been watching the music people and what's going on and what's happening. And I've been very disappointed because I've seen a lot of them don't work and a lot of them don't get out there. What's that reason? Because this is the city where they where, where it is happening. This is where it kind of starts. This is like the beginning, the middle and the end. Yeah. Well, there, well, in the old days I used to hate disco because that took away a lot of gigs for the bands. Now it's the DJ thing, and I have nothing against DJs, but we're losing a lot of, you know... And karaoke, a lot of bars do karaoke every Friday night or every Saturday night, you know, yeah. which I don't blame them, it brings people in, everybody's... Well, I guess they've got to find a way, and I, I, I guess out there you have to find a new way, where to make a living. They've got these, you know, these establishments, and they have to get mm -hmm. people in there. And so the bands, I've been to a couple of places in town, and yeah, they've been really good. But I guess you've got to try to get them in in different ways. Yeah. Well, see, there's a lot of bands in town that have that they can't play because there's not a lot of venues for bands now. So that's why we're doing mostly a duet. There's a lot of bands that ended up the lead singers ended up doing solo gigs because there's more room, there's more work for singles and duets in town. Well, Vegas is like no other town. As far as being a musician, as far as being a musician, because if you're a bar act. You're competing with the poker machines. The poker machines are what pay the bills. Yes. So they don't care if you bring in a hundred people that drink. If you bring in five people that gamble, that's bad. That's what they want, right? Because that's how they manage. And it's still that way. People have noticed also that the um, that the gambling hasn't gone down, but it's not as what it used to be. They don't have the great big gamblers, you know, of the middle class or whatever you want to call them, because they seem to have a lot of parties now. They seem to have a lot of nightclubs, and they have. I was saying last week that they've got tables. You can buy a table for twenty. Five thousand just for the evening. I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> that was like crazy. But that's how it is, you know. And so it's sort of, you know, it's, it's changed a bit. And you two, to keep yourselves busy, have gone with the change. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm always hustling. I'm always looking for work. Always. I'm constantly and, and on my phone and calling people. And how do you? I don't look at her secret or whatever how she gets the work. But how do you get it? Well. <laughs> well, that's Vegas. That's Vegas. That is Vegas. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I just I uh, <laughs> go out, hang, hang out there. I'm sorry. I'm a pass. She's <laughs> bad. So I'm a pass. That's how I get the work. I'm a pass. You're a pass. Yeah. And they let us play one time. Yeah, you seem and, to be a nice pass. Well, but then we always get asked back. It's just that getting that first, you know. It's getting that first. Yeah. In that. And if you don't have a real slick video. That's a problem too. You know. What has ever been, both of you, what has ever been your worst moments or worst thing that's ever happened to you performing? If you've ever had one. <laughs> no, Obviously, really it doesn't seem that they've ever had one. No. You've never had We've that. Been lucky. We've had a, a mostly good moments. Yeah. You've had good moments. Yeah. yeah. Is that because do you practice a lot and are you in tune together? You've only been together three years, so you know, yeah. before you did a lot of stuff. Were you any, in any big bands? No, she did the Hollywood scene. Though she did the, uh, you know, whiskey go go. Whiskey go go. Whiskey Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on the corner there. Of, of, what is it? Sunset. 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 And Johnny. Yeah. Sunset. Okay. Sunset. 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 People here want to go to Los Angeles because they think it's better there. Then they get there and they want to come back here. It's hard no matter where you go. It's hard no matter where you go. What about New York? New York? I can't say because I've never tried there. Never tried there. Austin. Austin's good music town. You know. Yeah. You know what we've noticed that we're older. That's that's kind of a negative for us as far as getting work. But 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 there's no there's no music agents in town unless they're for the bigger acts like Zoe Bowie and stuff. But there's no. I want a Colonel Tom Parker, so she doesn't have to do the work all so the time. So you don't. So you two don't have an agent. No, I right. do all. She does everything. And all. the reason you don't have an agent is because there is not an agent in town. Do you have that? Well, out there? there should be agents in town in Vegas. I mean, whether you're big or small or whatever you are. For, I mean, right. You've got people here that, that 
They all want you to have a, a super high quality, expensive package, and if you're just a working garbage, you don't have that. You know? Oh, of course not. You've got to, you know, you're sort of. I'm not saying you're struggling because you two don't look as if you're struggling. No, we're good. You look as if you're doing very, very well, and you're very happy with the whole thing. Yeah. What message? And I always like this. What message would you like to give to the younger generation who are in the music business and how they can proceed or get to the next place? Well, I think if you're truly a musician, it's all you're ever going to want to do. So don't quit. Just keep trying because Eventually. that's the only way you're going to be happy is if you keep doing what you love. Eventually you're going to make it. And I think persistence, I think practice, knowing a lot of people, do what Stefan does. Just go out there. Just go out there. And don't forget, this is there. Is this CD out? Yes. This is out. So don't forget to go to their website. What's your website? www.stephanrock.com There you go. It's put very, very easy. Stephanrock.com. Very, very, very easy. Check them out and see what they are. Thank you so much. You've been absolutely amazing. Thank you, I, love you. I love you. You're great. And you're not too old. They are not too old. <laughs> believe me. We'll be right back. <laughs> you play something? That was good. Yeah, play something. Okay, yeah. Good. Play something. Yeah. But what's play something. What, what's something you're going to do? Uh, we, we have a second one. What do you want to do? What do you think? Another Elvis. Fit. Another Elvis. Okay, with Elvis. Okay. Wait, 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 hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Let, her, let her intro you. Wait, tell her the tell her name of song. Okay. Okay, we're going to exit with another Elvis song since we're in the Elvis booth. And they're going to surprise me which one they're going to play. They're not telling me. I don't know why, but they're not telling me. Go for it. Let's Either way, it. don't be cruel. Oh. You know I can't be flat. Sit home all alone. You can't come around. Thank you both very much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, thank you. We'll be right back.